Hello, all you beautiful people. Today I have a new FedNow update. I got more information on Volante, mentioning Ripple, of course, their favorite company to work with and work for. And we're gonna get into it. I have so much to talk about, so much to go over. Let's get into it. But first, thank you so much for all the amazing comments. I read everything. I try to get back to everybody's comment. I really appreciate all the support. We're pushing up to 9,000 subscribers on this channel and I can't do it without you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me, it really does. And I really appreciate all the love and support. So thank you so much. Uh, this gentleman, he looks like a Phil or a Patrick. I don't know what to call this gentleman, but it says, how regulations within FedNow legally require instant payments, immediate settlement with ISO 20022, uh, messages uh, plus participation in FedNow through third party or FedLine, uh, no correspondent banking regu uh, re relationship mentioned, right? So what does that tell you? That tells you that they're not going to be using the old system. They're going to be using the new system. And the new system uses that sexy ass thing we call cryptocurrency to get instant settlement, right? Right. All right, let's play this. To the receiver's account immediately. Well, just how long is immediately? It kind of reminds me of the song, How Soon Is Now? The Smith fans out there, you guys get that. I'm not a Smith fan. I have no idea what he's talking about. Real quick, instant payment, pun intended. The new Regulation J subpart C rules create procedures to make it possible for real-time end-to-end fund transfer completion. How does this work? An end user, which could be an individual or a business, initiates a payment by sending a payment message to their financial institution through an end user interface, a phone or a tablet or a computer. And that is actually outside of the FedNow service. Now the end user's financial institution, or maybe that financial institution's service provider, then submits the payment message using the ISO 20022 format standard into the FedNow service. Okay, now the FedNow service, they validate the payment message and they send the contents of the message to what we call the receiving participant, which is gonna be the receiving bank or the receiving credit union. Now that receiving participant, they must confirm that they intend to accept the payment or they can actually do what we call accept without posting, but we're not gonna get in that today. We're gonna say that they accept it. Now upon this confirmation, the FedNow service debits and credits the designated master accounts of the sending and receiving financial institutions or what we call settlement at the bank level. The FedNow service then sends a payment message to the receiving financial institution, that receiving participant, with what we call an advice of credit, and an acknowledgement gets sent to the sending participant that settlement is complete. Everything's moved. The money's moved around. This FedNow instant payment, it's final. It's irrevocable. It's final and irrevocable at the earlier time of when the amount of the payment order is credited to the receiving bank's settlement account or when the reserve bank sends the receiving bank a confirming payment order or notice of credit. All right. So that was a really good update on kind of what, what's going on inside the Fed now. And this is new ACH payments rules for micro deposits. So micro deposits are, I don't know if you've ever tried to like verify a bank account and they send like one or two cents in there and they have to have you fill out like how much did you receive to verify the account? That's what micro payments are, right? A very small amount of money being sent to verify an account. All right, just wanted to verify that. Micro entries are small entries, really, really small entries. But we need to look at what the ACH rules say about these really, really small entries. According to the upcoming ACH rule, micro entries are defined as an ACH credit of less than a dollar and any offsetting ACH debits that are used for the purpose of verifying a receiver's account. There you go. Wait, what? What? You see, micro entries, or these really small entries, deposits, they're actually something that's been in use for a while and they're generally accepted as a practice in the electronic payments industry for verifying and validating a receiver's account. Well, now what we have happening is Nacha is defining them as micro entries, but you may also hear them called test transactions or test deposits, maybe even mini deposits or micro deposits. This new ACH rule is defining micro entries, but it's also standardizing the micro entry description in some of the formats we want to be able to use and things like the company name. And they're doing that to make it easier for those in the industry that are working with these micro entries to be able to identify that we're working with micro entries. The rule also establishes micro entry origination best practices while also establishing risk management requirements for the origination of micro entries. In other words, this is how you do it. All right. Uh, when there's music, I tend to dance. Uh, you should see me in the car. Like I'm, that's why I have dark tint on my car so people can't see me dancing when I kind of just am by myself, I'm rocking and rolling. Uh, I like a lot of techno music, so uh, be that with you, mate. All right, so for my so, what will be offered uh, at the beginning of FedNow core clearing and settlement features? So this is kind of what, is, what will be offered at the beginning. So now the advisory phase is complete and the FedNow service has moved to the testing phase. At launch, the Fed will release core clearing and settlement functionality to participants. These functions enable use cases, enhance safety and security, and improve the customer experience. Release one will be as follows, and it says service level, transfers and settlement so this is 24 360 24 7 365 basic reporting high availability accessed via fed line solutions right so 
access to the fed line right so you can do fed line in fed wire okay we talked about that credit push iso 20022 messaging maximum transaction limit remittance information in the settlement layer we got master account settlement correspondent uh, correspondent respondent seven day accounting and intraday seven day accounting means seven days a week right because we're moving from a normal bank system which is nine to five monday through friday which doesn't help anybody to seven days all day long all day long right or all all the time all day long not all day long all day long. blonde moment my bad so um they have to go to a seven day accounting because they're going to have deposits on saturdays and sundays now right deposits and and and, and uh, payments and settlement and different things so they have to go to a seven day system also too the federal reserve supports the de uh, de development of instant payment services from private sector payment systems plus payments could be settled on private ledger supported by pre-funded joint accounts with the fed all right, so uh, let's read the highlighted portions here. Further, the Federal Reserve supported the development of private sector services for instant payments by enabling the use of, a, of joint accounts to facilitate settlement in the instant payment services uh, in private sector payment systems for instant payments. And as an example, the existing private sector instant payment service settles payments in real time on its private ledger supported by a joint account at the Federal Reserve Bank that is pre-funded by participants in the service, all right? Uh, then it goes on to say, uh, so this is actually a, a different thing. So Shanghai Bank uses Ripple for remittance corridor between USA and China, guys. This is big. This is big. Uh, Ripple has its own cryptocurrency, XRP, which is actively traded on several crypto exchanges. Ripple is also operates its own exchange structured as a network described above in which the top currencies actively exchanged are CNY, USD, JPY. So this is, uh, I think this is Japanese yen and the euro. In addition, other currencies like BTC, Bitcoin and Ethereum are also actively exchanged. The Shanghai, uh, Hura, Hurai, Hurai, I, sorry, I butchered that. That's on me. Bank recently announced that uh, it is working on a remittance product using Ripple for USA and China corridors. That's a big effing deal, big deal. And I wanted to show you this. I showed this on another video, but I just wanted to show you how big this is, guys. Look, Bloomberg, this is from Bloomberg. 90% of financial institutions are currently preparing to implement Fed now, 90%. 90 the other 10 are gonna be out of business soon they're gonna be gone they're dinosaurs they don't see the future like you and i do that's why you're here you're learning about what is going to be used in this new system cryptocurrency right Ooh. all right i'm feeling it let's keep going also guys if you're not familiar right this is a good RippleNet and XRP, right? RippleNet is really the messaging uh, messaging arm of, of Ripple. And then you have uh, ODL and XRP can be used. Economic model, value model, blockchain model, XRP consensus protocol, distri uh, distribution model, RippleNet. And then it says, uh, if, you, if you scroll in here, it says mission, allow faster and more uh, cost-efficient transfers. And the vision is enable peer-to-peer -peer transactions at scale. And the value proposition is financial institutions. The institutions part of the RippleNet are critical for the network to succeed. Companies and consumers for companies to accept it within their networks and for consumers to use it as a medium of exchange all right so i just want to show you that little value model there also to ripple partner uh ecs fin working directly with the federal reserve on fed wire right also here you go uh gateways and standards ripple blockchain i mean we're there guys we're there also some information more out of volante you have multiple people at volante heads of volante talking about ripple and how great their partnership is yes i'm you got the canadian system you have the u.s system you have now the system in china working with volante that's the next 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 tweet premium on reducing the cost of doing payment processing and that's something that payments in the service as a service in the cloud happens to be particularly good at is helping banks reduce the cost of their infrastructure so they can use those funds for for other things uh, like for example uh, providing more value-added services and that's really the other side of it um, it's not just about cost reduction it's also about the fact that banks today have to deal with a lot more different kinds of payment types real-time payments new cross-border settlement methods like ripple and gpi and on the front end, they've got to deal with open banking, APIs, uh, and really becoming value-added service providers. Let's take into account. Exactly. <laughs> so as a result, the agility that moving to a service model brings, uh, the speed that cloud brings, uh, is, if, if it were just those things, that would be enough. 
uh, but the fact that the cloud also is now more secure uh, than a typical bank data center and uh, performs better. Really, when you put all those things together, uh, it's a huge magic. win for payments as a service provider. You have, you have magic when you put all that together, right? Also, check this out. Volante Global strengthens Asia presence with launch of Volante in Singapore. I mean, right? 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 All right, check this out. So, ISO 20022 cryptocurrencies. All right, check this out. Here's a list, right? So, I get this question all the time. Sensei, how do you know it's XRP? How do you know? Like, how do you know, right? The Federal Reserve has been working on this for almost 10 years, nine, nine years and change, okay? What was around nine years and some change ago, right? Quant launched in 2018, it wasn't Quant. Stellar launched in like 2014, 2015. Maybe it's Stellar, but it's not, okay? IOTA and HBAR, it's not them, right? It's not XTC, because XTC launched in 2019 and it's in Singapore, right? It's not Algorand and it's not Cardano. Right, Cardano is just now being looked at as a security, so it's definitely not them. Who is who is the last man standing or the last woman standing? It's Ripple. Ripple and XRP are going to be the fundamental interoperability for everything to do with the new financial and the new layer system of the new financial system. It's Ripple. And, and Quant is, is working kind of with Ripple on this as well. Quant is working with a lot of central banks, but in the United States, to talk about Fed now, it's Ripple all the way. All you have to do is keep researching, keep studying, and you will see what I see. And if you need help, if you need help researching, if you need help understanding, if you need help growing, think about joining the Crypto Nearest community. This is my chat for today. I do two chats a week. This is my crypto chat, my sensei chat for today. All of this is news, connections, information that you could learn. And if you really want to take that next step, the link is down in the description. I appreciate you making it to the end of the video. If you did, tell me that you're bullish in the comments. Please tell me what you're holding right now, what you think is going to make it. What, is you, what do you think is going to be in this new financial system? And uh, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I wish you all the best. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. If you need help on your crypto journey, please think about joining Cryptonaires. I have a great community, been there over two and a half years, and we've been providing crypto information on new projects, blue chips, NFTs, TradeFi, CFI, anything you want is in that community. And I can also help you on your journey, take you from maybe a two to three knowledge or four knowledge to an eight to nine or 10. I would really appreciate it. Please turn the bell notification on and subscribe if you're not already. I'm going to bring you the best crypto content that I can find and I'll never waste your time, I promise.